Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to my final chess video of 2022. It's time to get nostalgic as I'm recording this on December the 31st. We look back at our year, we look back at the amazing brilliancies or the horrible blunders that happened in our chess games, but also away from our chess games in our day-to-day -day lives. It has been a tremendous pleasure uh, making all of these videos for all of you, not just in 2022, in the years prior as well. Uh, and if you're a longtime viewer or just getting a video recommended to you in the YouTube algorithm and you decided to click, uh, this video is going to be a catastrophe uh, and hopefully you can enjoy it uh, alongside me. We just finished the World Chess Championships of Rapid and Blitz Chess, some of the world's greatest minds on the 64 squares, competing, battling it out over the course of five days. While this video is anything but that, this video is a late submission for arguably the worst chess game of 2022, maybe the worst chess game of the last 20 years, and maybe the worst chess game ever played, okay? And it was sent to me by a subscriber, who is uh, vo voluntarily going to be roasted. This is part of our How to Lose at Chess playlist. And I don't, I don't really want to intro the game anymore. Let's just take a look at this game. Now, the protagonists of this game are Maui from the United Kingdom and Santiago from Argentina. You see, Santiago sent this game to me. And Santiago is probably still a little bit drunk from World Cup celebrations, so he kind of gets a free pass. Let's look at this game. And what I want you to pay attention to in this game is Stockfish. Stockfish is going to die looking at this game. We begin the game with e3. And you know what? Before I'm even going to get into the game, if you're watching this in the first like six hours of the video coming out, my courses sale is running out. 40% off any of my courses. And when you look at a game like this, they really should have taken advantage of the sale. Link is in the description. e5. Knight f3, knight c6. Now, a lot of newbies struggle with this for some reason. They're very bad at... Um, opponent's pawns being able to go into the center and attack their knights. This is why you should not really play e3, especially with white. You should try to take uh, center space. Uh, e3 is hardly center space. But okay, d4. It's not horrible. I've seen worse, you know, in the opening. Black plays z4. I love this move. Uh, and now white plays this move knight to d2, attacking the pawn in the center. And I mean, listen, thus far, logical stuff. Uh, l thus far, very good stuff from the players here. Now, um... In this position, white is already better because what white should do is try to undermine the center with the move c4. Then white should play knight c3, targeting the pawns. Then maybe queen b3, and it's actually like a reverse French defense. Reverse French defense at the 500 level is, you know, yeah. So, it, it, so, so white plays the move g3, trying to develop the bishop out this way. The eval now goes from minus, uh, from plus 1.4 to minus 0.6. Now, black here can actually highly consider a move like f5, taking as much central space with pawns as possible, just making a rock-solid pawn formation. But okay, black plays bishop e6. I mean, this is like, again, not the worst move in the world. Bishop to g2. And now black should, again, consider the move f5, or consider developing, like, with the knight or the, or the bishop. Uh, what, what, what should not happen is the move bishop to b4. You guys should not put the bishops out to squares where enemy pieces, especially pawns, can just kick them out. Whether it's check, not check. You know, you just shouldn't, you gotta be really careful about this kind of stuff, okay? Um, now white castle, so, so far so good. Now, uh, in this position, once again, uh, black should probably play f5. Black should probably develop the knight. Black could play queen d7 and try to trade the bishop here and then castle long. Instead, black plays queen to f6, which, you know, according to the computer, is a horrible move. And now it's plus two for white. This is just the beginning, though. Queen f6 is just this kind of vague newbie move, like I'm going to move my queen out and then maybe my queen is going to do damage in the future. Okay, if you say so. So white now does, in fact, play this move c3. Bishop to d6, and still the move c4 is definitely the best move, um, because what it does is it just simply undermines everything. And there's a hidden other idea, which is to trap the bishop, actually. So you can get this bishop trapped, <coughs> which incredibly the computer doesn't even think is the best move. Doesn't matter. So we have this position. Uh, when you don't know what to do as a 500, you just push pawns. b4. Okay, b4, indeed. Uh, black castles long. Okay, so white sent out a flare over here, and what does black do? Uh, rather than start any sort of counterattack or try to castle the king this way, 
or bring the queen over to like, you know, no, black castles directly into white's powerful attack of b5 and a4 you know like b5 is gonna happen and then c4 and then a4 and then blah 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 blah. okay no no that doesn't happen in this position white plays the absolutely mystifying captivating move bishop to a3 again on its own not really such a it doesn't blunder anything so i don't really hate it i just don't really know what it does i mean generally you're gonna go bishop to a3 because you're going to play the move b4 to b5 at some point folks um, I'm not gonna lie to you, that move never happens, all right? Like, I'm not trying to spoil anything, but you would think that the person put the bishop behind the pawn to see this after moving here. That move just never happens, okay? So black plays knight to e7, and again, white should try to play b5 or, you know, bring the queen over here and then b5. Um, white plays knight b3. Again, white is not blundering anything. I mean, the computer hates the move, make no mistake about it, but, um... White is still doing all right, but yeah, I mean, white should definitely be playing a little bit more forcefully with the pawns. Now, same goes for black. Black should start launching an attack. Why? Because you have a queen, a rook, a knight, a bishop, bishop, all over here. And, you know, th this attack on white will will crash through. Uh, black is very close. And as you can see, just from one simple pawn trade, it's minus six. The computer does not think that white has any way to stop this attack coming. Uh, why is the attack so potent? The attack is so potent because the player's castled on opposite sides. Uh, white doesn't have uh, any sort of pieces necessary to defend the king. And the center is locked. And when the center is locked, it's very difficult to transfer your pieces. Which is why a move like f3 should have been played a long time ago. So white could at least get some counterplay. But okay, black plays knight f5. And now white plays knight a5, which, okay, is a move. I mean, it's a legal move for sure. Um, now absolute chaos happens. So black is just completely oblivious to what's going on over here. Now, what black should probably take, and then take, and then continue the attack. In this position, black plays the move knight to h4, which is a fascinating move. Like, an absolutely fascinating move. Um, it's actually kind of a brilliant move. It, it's not, it's a bad move, but the idea of knight to h4 um, is to obviously get the bishop and to come in here, and if white takes the knight, then the idea is to play queen takes h4 and checkmate white. Actually, a fascinating idea. Really, like an absolutely brilliant idea. Um, but, except... <laughs> 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 Except in this position, I told you this game was going to make my COVID recovery longer. Except in this position, white of course took the knight. And I told you, you know, black probably had some crazy attacking ideas, right? Black proceeds to play a move on the opposite side of the board. Okay. And then, black is of course going to play queen h... And, and, and then black trades bishops. So, Black had all of the ingredients necessary to bake the cake, okay? Instead, Black, you know, blew up the kitchen and the whole house, frankly. It, just, it was all there. I mean, you, you, you thought that, you know, that was all part of the plan. No, Black just loses a knight and then trades two pieces. Do not trade pieces when you are losing. You will run out of play very quickly. And now Black just plays a6. I mean, just, sure, just a6. So, Black lost the knight, traded off all their attacking pieces, and now is wasting time as well. White here plays the top engine move, Rook B1, which is awesome. And now the attack is brewing down the B file. Now Black suddenly realizes, oh, wait a minute, Queen takes H4. Yes, of course. Now, White just played Rook B1. So obviously White has their eyes set on the B7 pawn and the only natural follow-up to the move Rook to B1 to create irresistible threats against the Black King is to play the move F3. What? I thought we had an understanding here. Okay, no, fine, white, no. So black plays the move f5 now. By the way, can we just address the fact that they've played 20 moves and they've only spent five minutes each? What is the point of playing a 30-minute game if you have no intention of ever thinking? But whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, now white takes on e4, f takes e4, and now, uh, again, white plays you know, queen b3. No, white plays a decent move, though, c4. Now white is actually using their pawns which is like fascinating to me. Throughout this game, white did not use any of their pawns. Now white creates one pawn break, which is really nice, and now a second pawn break to soften up the center and try to get some pieces 
uh, to the party. Uh, black plays the move c6, and naturally, you know, you would think that white has just pushed the pawn, so white will take. No, white plays the move knight to c2. Okay, fine. I guess. Sure. Um, white should have played queen b3 a while ago. Okay, black plays the move rook f8. Now, normally, uh, you're winning, so a rook trade is fine. The only reason I wouldn't do that is because a rook trade isn't great if you surrender the entire file. So, if you want to keep the tension among the rooks, you should play a move like queen to d2 or queen to e2. And what that does is, if black ever takes your rook, then you will play rook takes f1, and now you control the file. You can also play another move after rook f8, like let's say queen e1, just trying to trade the queens off the board. I mean, you might lose this pawn, but you're going to win that pawn, so... You know, you could also take first. Uh, what you shouldn't do is avoid all the trades and give away the file. So, suddenly black is winning again, almost. Because you stepped away. And so now, black can actually double up on this file and create an attack on the white king. Which, of course, black does not see. Black backs up to f6. Uh, the move queen f6 is a fascinating move. Because it's so bad. It just doesn't make any sense to play queen f6. But okay, black plays queen f6. Uh, white plays back to f1. Because, you know. And now queen e7. And now just... Okay, I, I would love to just get into the brain of this individual. Just like see what neurons are firing. So take a look at the last few moves. Rook f8, rook e1. Queen f6, rook f1 back. Queen to e7. Rook e1 again. What is happening? Now, at this point, black plays the move g5, because black doesn't really know what to do. So black is like, well, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna attack you. Now, white here just totally loses his mind. He doesn't use his queen, he doesn't use his knight, he doesn't use his rooks, he plays the move h3. The move h3 is so bad, because you are being attacked on that side. You do not have sufficient coverage on that side, why are you making targets for your opponent? Now the opponent, in the future, I'm not saying right now, but in the future, will be able to create a target on your pawn to open the position and get into your king. You should have traded some pieces. H3 is just not the way to go, and black does in fact play H5. Now you might say, that's a free pawn. It is, nobody sees that though. And not to mention, it's not even a good move, because it opens up the H file. <coughs> now white plays something logical. White takes on d5, finally. Uh, black plays rook takes d5. And now we're back to sort of logical moves. Knight to b4, attacking the rook. The rook takes the free pawn. Now, again, in this position, if, you gave, if I gave you 10 guesses, you would never guess white's move. White has a queen. White has a rook. Rook, knight, bishop. You know, trade the rooks off or something. Do something useful with your position. Break open the center and give a check or something like that. In this position, white plays rook a1. Why? That's such a passive move. Not to mention, you lose a knight. That was all you had. You were up a knight. And now it's gone. Why? Why did you do that? But black plays bishop back to d7. Oh my god. Now, white moves the knight out of danger. Black... Okay, folks, I'm just going to say something right now. The, the rest of this game, which is 30 moves, doesn't make any sense. Like, if you're prone to migraines, you might try to grab some medication ahead of time. Because... What you're about to witness is awful. Okay, black plays b5. Giving the advantage back to white, um, weakening their position, blocking their rook out of the game. Um, white just gives back the knight. Like, white just moved the knight, white decides to go back and just gives up the knight for a second time. Black plays the move h4. I don't know what this does. I don't really care, to be honest. Um... Now, you know, white should probably defend the knight and then continue an attack. 
No, White just sacrifices the knight. White just loses the knight. Now, the incredible thing is, that's actually not a blunder. Because the engine sees a follow-up of rook c1, d5, queen to d4. That's never going to happen in a million years. No, White just lost the knight, by the way, after spending 6 seconds out of 23 minutes on the clock. And now White plays a3. Pawn to a3. Just a random pawn move. Clearly did not sacrifice the knight to open up an attack. And Black takes on a3, blundering again back to White. Now this one's kind of difficult. This one's hard to see. The move is queen c1 here. Very nice little move. I don't know why the time resets every time I make a hypothetical move on the board. So, queen hits this and this, and it, you know, but that's a little bit too difficult. Instead, white plays rook b1, and, um, you know, black is, uh, black is doing very well. Now black plays the move a5, and the advantage is completely back to white, uh, because that move destabilizes the structure. Now white can also play queen c2 and rook c1, and boom, the attack continues uh, on, on black. Uh, instead of that, white plays d5. Uh, not completely giving the advantage back to black, but, you know, giving it back enough. Uh, and now, um, white plays the move d6. Now, in this position, black must play the move queen to e5, okay? Uh, because if you play the move queen to f6, as happens in the game, uh, now, uh, white has queen d5 and queen a8. Not to mention rook f1 first, and then queen d5. Rook f1 is winning because you will trade, and then here there's a fork, which is pretty brutal. Uh, but instead, you know, now it's plus nine. Okay, now white should be looking for ways to attack the black king. Queen c1, queen d5, queen d4, rook, whatever. White takes on e4, and now it's back to being minus two. Uh, it's back to being minus two because of queen e5, queen g3. Uh, black plays the move, bishop takes h3. It's now back to being plus eight. Uh, if white plays queen to d5, teaming up with the bishop. Instead, white plays the move bishop to c6, uh, which blunders uh, checkmate, basically. Not exactly, but it blunders minus 14 for black. After queen f2, this is not mate, uh, but rook a2, uh, and it's mate on the next move. So it's just game over. Uh, instead of that, black does not see this whatsoever and plays the move b4, giving back plus 2.4 advantage to white. White plays the move d7 check, giving minus 5 advantage to black after the move king to c7. And now after bishop to b5, it's literally checkmate in two on the board because the bishop has taken its eye off the g2 square. So it's queen f2, queen g2. The game is over. Instead of that, black plays the move bishop to f5, giving back almost all the advantage, just trying to attack the rook. The rook goes to c1, the king moves to b6, and now it is plus 7 for white. From a minus 4 position, it is plus 7 for white, because all the rook has to do is follow the journey to c6, where it will attack the queen and the king. Instead of that, white plays the move e4, and now it is minus 17, actually 33, actually 54, probably mate after rook g3 and bishop takes e4. I mean, it's simply mate. It's queen f2, it's rook g3, the game is absolutely over. Um, instead of that, black plays the move, king takes b5, and now it is back to being completely equal because white has perpetual check with queen to d5. Instead of that, uh, you know, white just played the move e4 attacking the bishop. Instead of that, white plays the move rook to f1, and now it's back to minus uh, a million because it's mate. Uh, rook to g3 and queen to b6 both lead to checkmate on this king. Instead of that, white plays, black plays the move a4, uh, and since white just played the move Think about this. White just played the move rook to f1, attacking the bishop. It would be a fork, right? So the move a4 blunders a fork, and then a promotion, and the game is over. Instead of that, instead of taking the bishop with the rook and forking, just like you planned, you now take with the pawn, and now it's back to being advantage to black in the form of minus four. Uh, now, black needs to activate the pieces and attack the white king. Instead, black plays the move b3, giving back plus 15 advantage to white in the form of queen to d5 and just various checkmates in the center of the board. White instead plays queen e2, king goes to b4. Now, no matter where you look, it is basically force made by white, who will likely win this game by accident, except if they play this move, and now it's back to equal because the move queen to b6 check leads to a draw. Instead, we have rook to a2, and now we have queen to e3, and black's king is not in any danger, but it's still plus nine because the king is here. Black plays the move a3. It is now plus 70. It's plus seven, it's mate. But not if you play this move, because now it's only plus four because of queen b6 check. 
Black plays the move g4, intending on losing the game as fast as possible. Now rook to f4 check, and it's basically going to be ladder mate in the center of the board. King to c5. This leads to mate. This leads to mate. This leads to mate. Everything leads to mate. Taking the pawn on g4 does not lead to mate, but it's still good enough because the black king is wide open in the center of the board. Black plays the move b2. Now it's once again mate in a million different ways. It's mate by accident. It's mate this way. It's mate that way. White plays the move, rook to g6, and um, then proceeds to not mate in three, not mate in four, not mate in four, but to trade the queens and to make a new queen. Well, fine. I mean, who can really blame white? No queens on the board. Queen c7, rook b6, whatever. It, it's going to be made in a, in, a, in a little bit. No, black, to black's credit. Black's doing a nice job. You got to give Santiago credit here. Doing a nice job here, using his pawns, using his rook. It is made 3,000 million bajillion different ways. Unless you play the move queen a8. Which is not even a check. I don't even, like, I don't even understand why you would play queen a8. Now it's rook takes d1 check. And black now is probably going to win, although it's still a draw if white finds perpetual check. This is a good start, apparently. Yeah, it's apparently still a draw. But every move has to be checked, right? Because you're down a rook. Instead of that, white plays the move rook to h6. It's now made in three for black. 35,000 ways. Black gives a check. King to h3. Rook h1. Terrific. King to g4. And in this position, the move queen e4 is made in one. Instead of that, black thinks his rook is hanging, which it's not and plays the move rook to f1. He spends about 20 seconds and plays rook f1, blundering the game back to a draw. And in this position, white resigned. With nearly 13 minutes on the clock and a draw on the board by perpetual check, a move ago, it was made in one. Black doesn't find made in one. And white resigns out of... Boredom? Frustration? This was a disaster. White resigned the game in an equal position with 13 minutes on the clock. I mean, this has to be one of the worst chess games of the year. Happy New Year, everybody. I hope it's a good one. Now get out of here.